Hey y'all, William did a Pungo Prairie. Now, around where I live, there's a whole lot of these farm to table events going on um, where, you know, you go to a local farm and, and maybe one of those farms has like a, a venue, a pavilion or something, and, and people are invited, gather around and, and they go out and they harvest the, the crops in the field or get the, the chickens fresh or the beef fresh you know, right off the farm and and they prepare it up good and delicious and set a big old fancy table up and everybody sits down to a delicious, beautiful, wonderful, um, just fantastic meal. But I think there is a huge disconnect in our culture today, our society, especially here in America. And this is my opinion. Um, and it's what I believe, but there's this huge disconnect of people and their realization of folks really understanding what happens in between the time that that uh, those vegetables, those crops are in the field on the farm, or those cattle or lambs or chickens are, are grazing around or pecking around on the farm to where it actually winds up on the plate in front of you with all those beautiful place settings going on around and you know it's gotten to the point uh, as we have moved from an agrarian society to even more a, a technical age a high-tech age that that uh, that disconnect has even become uh, wider a, a greater chasm of understanding that I mean you know, we used to just go to the grocery store and pick out our vegetables, you know, in the in the produce section and then the dairy products, you know, in the in the cases, the dairy cases and and our meat either wrapped up in a nice little uh, styrofoam tray with a, a little diaper underneath it to soak up any blood that might trickle out of it or juice and then a nice bubble wrap on top. And, uh, and a lot of us don't even do that anymore, especially uh, this past year with this virus we've been dealing with. We just go on our computer, we pick out what we want, we hit send, place our order, and then a clerk from the store uh, brings it out to the curb and loads it in the trunk for us. So that's even a wider disconnect of being able to go in there and tell the busher yourself when you see a, a cut of meat and say, okay, I would like, you know, a two inch thick steak or these chops. I'd like you to, you know, do this, that, and the other. But what I wanted to just tell you about uh, before we get into this video, I wanted to kind of prepare you uh, because I don't want to, you know, kind of just shock anybody. I don't want a lot of shock and awe going on here. Um, for me personally, the way that I like to stay connected to the earth, to what I feel is real and, and, and really gives me a greater appreciation for what it takes to sustain my life, my physical life, in, in the food that uh, people produce and that I end up consuming. And I think it's very important, at least for me, to have that appreciation. So, you know, I spent a lot of time on farms when I was a kid. I, I never really lived on a farm, but my family had farms. They raised everything, corn, potatoes, you know, had uh, truck farms, everything you would imagine in a, in a garden, in a home garden, orchards, apples, peaches, grapes, um, and of course, beef and pork and, um, and that sort of thing. But uh, personally, I like, I really like knowing where my food comes from. And a couple of the ways that I know where my food comes from is I harvest it myself, whether from my little garden on the Pungo Prairie. And then, I, you know, you've seen me can up different things, tomato sauces, peppers, things like that. And I'm a meat eater. Uh, I like everything, most everything. I know there's a lot of folks out there that, you know, are vegans, they're uh, vegetarians, and that's okay. Um, I know a few of those, and I know a few of them that have gotten 
back away from being vegetarians or vegans, especially vegans, because they weren't getting the proper nutrition that their bodies needed, and they, they had some health issues. One of my very dear friends, um, her favorite thing to do is put all sorts of things in a juicer, beets and celery and I don't know, you name it, and juice it all up because she thinks she's eating healthy. And, and I suppose she is, but she's sick more often than anybody I know. And, um, and I don't even think she's really a veget I mean, a, a, a vegetarian, a vegan anyway, but, uh, I know she strives for this very healthy lifestyle. And I believe in doing things in moderation when it comes to, uh, just about anything in life. And there's a balance that, that you need to have there. But getting back to my point of liking to know where my food comes from uh, and harvesting it myself, that's one reason I hunt, is because I know from the time that animal is harvested in the forest or field, what happens to it every step of the way to where it makes it on my plate. And where I hunt, it's in wild places. I don't hunt in uh, suburban areas or places that are close in proximity of big cities. It's pretty much a wilderness setting uh, in most respect. And those animals, uh, most of the time it's deer, could be some turkeys, could be some squirrels, rabbits. They're foraging on everything that's natural and good and pure. Uh, the mass crop, the acorns, uh, wild insects, you know, there might be salamanders under a rock that a turkey, you know, digs out around the edges and plucks up a wild turkey. And, and I know that these animals, they haven't gotten uh, treated by any antibiotics or hormones or any growth enhancement uh, products. It's just been all good natural stuff that's gone into their bodies. So hopefully it's all good natural stuff that's going into my body. Now, some of y'all say, well, yeah, look at you, Dixon. I mean, you don't look like you're the, the picture of health, but, but actually I'm a pretty healthy guy. Um, you know, I've, al I've always kind of had a weight problem. I have a kind of a slow metabolism, but that's what we want to get into all that right now. Um, my, my weight's been up and down is, you know, if I ate like a lot of folks do, I, I only eat one meal a day. If I eat three meals a day, I'd be bigger in the house. But, um, I just wanted to uh, to tell you now that I've said all that, that in this video, one of our guys, David, harvested a black bear on opening day of muzzleloading season up in the mountains. And it was getting on towards late in the afternoon. It was just a little after five o'clock. So there was only about another half hour of daylight left and when he harvested this bear. And he had cell phone reception and he managed to be able to call me and reach me on the phone. I was back down in camp. And he said, uh, you know, what should I do? I said, well, you're pretty long way up the mountain. And I think the best thing to do is you're going to need some help to get that bear out uh, back down here to camp. So I said, field dress it. He said, well, how do you do that? I said, well, you, you field dress deer. You're pretty much going to field dress a bear the same way. And then after you do that, I'll turn it upside down, open the body cavity up and prop it up on some logs so that you can get that nice cold mountain air circulating all the way around that bear and leave something there uh, next to that bear with your scent on it. And that way it'll help to, uh, to ward off any uh, predators or uh, <clears throat> scavengers because we have a lot of coyotes up there. We have, you know, could be another bear come down because they will eat each other. I mean, I've actually seen bears do that. Um, but, uh, just do that and we'll get up early in the morning and we'll go up there and we'll help you. We'll bring it down. So that's what we did. So in this video, um, the first 13 minutes of it is basically us getting the bear retrieved back to camp, uh, take a few pictures, tell a few stories about the hunt. And then I helped David because he had never done it before. And I've actually taken, you know, five bears. Uh, five or six bears before. Um, I've only ever shot one with a gun. Most of them have been with my bow, the rest of them. But I did have a little bit of experience on how to skin one out and how to butcher it. So that's what we're going to do in the first part of this video. We're going to get this bear all ready 
to uh, to make a delicious recipe. Uh, one of the recipes we're going to make with it, which is a Greek stew, is called kapama, and it really turned out to be a, a fun and exciting and and delicious uh, experience. The whole thing. So, like I said, if you kind of want to miss the the first part of the video where we're actually doing the processing and go straight to the, the cooking part of it, which I think you'll probably really enjoy that. Um, skip the first 13 minutes of it, or maybe you don't want to watch this video at all. But if you want to see how to skin out a black bear, butcher it, and cook up a delicious dinner, don't go nowhere, because you don't want to miss this. mountain. I used to could almost run up this mountain back years ago. I ain't doing too bad this morning neither. An old fella. Well the boys about 600 yards out through there. Down on the other side of this bowl. I don't know whether we wait here or go over there to them. cake from here. Alright, we got a Goshen Uber here. <laughs> That's a nice bear. It is a nice bear. Nice fur. It's got that winter hide. Getting ready to hibernate, stay warm, roam as long as he can. Eat as much as he can, but now we're going to eat off that bear. What about the white patch he's got on his chest? Well, I didn't get to see they that. all don't have that blaze, but um, that's beautiful. That's going to have to be a decision maker for David on how he wants to mount it, because he said he wanted to do a rug. Yep. And if he does a rug, you're not going to see that. So they might have to do some kind of frontal mount, half mount, uh, make that happen. Congratulations there, David Douglas. Tell us a little bit about your hunt. I was uh, deer slash bear hunting, hoping for a bear, and got really lucky. Yesterday was opening day for muzzleloader on bear, right? That's right. Usually I see them on Fridays. Comes in on Saturday. <laughs> this was my first opportunity. What time of day? It was 5 o'clock in the evening. Wow. So what would you do? You went ahead and dressed him out. Dressed him out in the dark. That was fun because I didn't know what I was doing. And got him kind of all opened up so he could cool out overnight. Yeah. And all the boys went up this morning and helped me get him out. Pretty work. Now we're going to skin him and cook him. Got a lot of work to do yet. <laughs> Pretty work. All right. Thank you, Bill. Since we decided we have to keep all the feet attached and... We can't use them to hang him by. We're going to lay him up here on the operating table. Back down? Yeah, back down. Uh-huh. 
So he's got a pretty white V on his chest. That stands for Virginia Bear. You made a nice straight cut, which is uh -huh. good. But you're going to want to go just like right up inside each leg, like it was you normally would do mm -hmm. for a deer. Damn. He looks and once big. we get here, you're going to have to start going inside all the way around the circumference of the bone. And then once you do that, we can cut the foot off, leave it attached to the hide because you want it attached if you decide to do a rug. I'll guide you. Just Fur, uh, uh, hide away from the bone without cutting. Working your knife, yeah, all the way around. So you might not need a very long, uh, yeah, we can take those off. If you have a knife that doesn't have a very long blade on it, you might be better off. Nice and sharp. And you start right. And get right in there. Yeah, right, right in there. And Come right on down. Should it start back peeling. or forward or just, just right there? Just, yeah, and you start peeling it away to either side after you do that. <clears throat> make that. All right, so. Keep it as much inside the leg as you can. Work right Work around, around that around bone, it. yeah, huh? All the way around <laughs> the circumference of it. Mm -hmm. With your knife tip inside. Okay, go ahead and cut through that joint right where your thumb is. Mm -hmm. And you can separate that uh, that lower leg from that ham and it'll be easier for you to get on the back side to skin that. Mm -hmm. and you might be able to feel your way right through that, that leg get joint. Through that joint. Yeah, right through the joint, cut through the cartilage. That's some tough tendons to cut through, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Take my Wyoming saw here and put it together for you. You can cut that there. I got one of those little saws. I got a couple of these. I got another one that I have a leather. Um, where are my blades? Well, that saw's not going to work without the blades. <laughs> <laughs> you know where the blades are? Virginia Beach. I put them in my other saw. <laughs> I got a I got a hacksaw blade down there. Well, I got a hacksaw hanging on the porch. Well, we'll use that. Where's the blade you used to cut that? <laughs> I forgot. I cut up. Uh, what did I cut up? I've got a. Oh, I cut up uh, pork steaks. I bought a Boston butt, and I needed the blade, and I robbed it out of here. See, I got another saw that didn't have the meat blade. <laughs> After you get the other side down there, and then we can roll it. To, to get what's on the back. I can't figure out what's going on right here. Oh, you, that's just a muscle. Just cut it right down, down to the hide. All right, Brandon, you leaving? I am. Thank you for those steaks last night. Yeah, it's good. We're pretty good, weren't they? <laughs> they Thanks for helping me doing that reverse sear. They didn't suck. <laughs> that reverse sear was really good. That's a great method way to do it. Well. And the way where everybody ate, I'd say you, we did okay. Now you know. Yeah. And the oysters were good. Oh, yeah. And the baked taters were good. Salad. And a salad. Everything's delicious. Yeah, it was good meat. I think the best part of it all was the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And David knowing he was going to have help to get this bear out. <laughs> he didn't have to, he didn't have to stay up there all night long. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame him. I would have done the same thing. When he's when I talked to him on the phone, that's when I he said, What do you think about tomorrow, man? We can just go up and get it. Because it's already I just finished gutting it and it was five that was, was five thirty. Yeah, it was dark. Um Brandon, tell Haven I said thank you for, I will. for my gifts. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you for uh, having me again, too. Guys. I'll see you soon. I'll be coming I love up coming here. I love seeing the guys every year. It's like four or five days of just having fun. And How long have I been doing this? Is it 40 years yet? <sighs> Probably close yeah, to close it. Close to it. 37, I think. 37, 37 years? Yeah, yeah, it's close to it. It's been a long time. From young men to grown men. Oh, you guys still were stupid, JMU, man. right? <laughs> still dumb. <laughs> Everybody met at JMU? Yeah. 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 We're all JMU boys. Look at that. Salt's salt right here. <laughs> I'm so greasy. Why don't you want to work the yeah. saw and I'll hold the. Okay. These are actually easier with the blade in backwards. See how the teeth are pointing forward mm -hmm. for sawing meat. Greasy son of a bitch. <laughs> it is. You don't call it bear grease for nothing. All right, I'm gonna hold this up. 
and you can take some more of that hide away. You boys doing such a good job there. I'm gonna have me a venison dog and supervise. Mm -hmm. I might have to grind some of this bear meat up and make some bear dogs. There you go. Yeah, that side's going a little bit easier because you know what you're doing now, David. Yeah, you got Jeff, it up there far to, enough. We can flip it back over to. now and uh, keep working from the underneath side. Mm -hmm. And we'll right. flip it, right? Yep. Yeah, when you get that shoulder blade separated, that front leg is loose, then you've got full option. You haven't cut that hide up there. If you want to do a front shoulder mount or a rug, your taxidermist won't have any unnecessary stitching to do. That way you got the usable meat all taken care of too. Pretty work. What's that? I'll hit those things with the torch and send those hairs hey, off of it. I want to pull Jeez. that hide back for you. I think that will help. Because it looks like to me you're struggling right it's here just, a little bit. You know, still, what, what's your neighbor like? Vent? Is it Vince? Or Vince? Vin yeah, Vince is good guy. You see how to cut that like loin out? <laughs> it's pretty much like a deer at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this works a lot better since you turn that blade around in there, Keith. Where's your knife? Right here? Yep. Let me see what we got here. One little chunk of bone left right there. You're home free now, buddy. Okay. Pretty work. This is like filleting a fish. Going right on out of there. Kind of marbly though, isn't it? Where yeah. the deer is all yeah, uh -huh. lean. It's kind of. And there's your bare back strap. All right, we're going to go right through this hip and ball joint. Tally dog, be quiet. And separate this ham back here. All right, I'm going to take this longer knife. Go right on down to here. All right, and there you go. One nice bear ham. We're going to trim that fat off, clean it up, and fix up something delicious with it. I think I know what I'm going to do. I uh, had planned to do a Arne Kampama, a a Greek lamb dish, but I ain't been able to find any lamb up here in Goshen. I think we might have to do some bear meat, kampama. That white blaze on his chest there is be beautiful. And uh, so you say not all bears have that? Not all of them have it. Well, there's the bear skin rug. All ready to go on the wall. Okay, I've had our bear ham dry aging in this little foil pan sitting on a bag full of ice in the cooler since Sunday. Now today is Friday, so that's been almost six full days. We've had a dry age going on with our meat here. Now what I want to do here is get the meat off the bone. I want to follow the natural segmentations in the different muscles and see if I can trim out three, maybe even four different cuts. Now I'm gonna start right here where we separated our ham at the ball and hip joint. And I'm gonna follow that bone right on down. It kind of goes at a little bit of an angle. See, it's gonna run from here to about here. And then just work it right on around our bone. Oh. 
smelly dog after that mouse in the wood pile there. Quiet on the set, tally dog. We're trying to make a movie here. Just follow it right on close. Get that meat right on away from that bone. Just like so. I lost my favorite little knife up on the mountain a couple weeks ago. And a lot of y'all know which one I'm talking about. And I've been up there looking all over and I ain't been able to find it. It was one my daddy gave me for Christmas one year. Probably 35, 40 years ago. And I'm sure we're missing that knife. Okay, we're going to go right over here. Right around that. Big old end there. Tally dog might have a good time with this bone. There you go. Okay, right here, I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to take, there's a crease, a natural crease right there. I'm going to go right on down and follow that. And I'm going to trim some of this fat off of here in a minute. So I can get a better idea of just exactly where I'm going to make these cuts. Alright, I'm going to use this knife right here. I'm just going to shave some of this fat. Tally, <laughs> you cracked me up with them mice. Okay, I got our fat trimmed away here. So I can come right on down here and make a longitudinal slice just like so and this piece right here will be our bottom round now I'm just gonna square that off it's just some cartilage from around that that knee joint and set our bottom round right here in this little pan for the time being now I'm gonna trim a little bit more of this fat off of here now this area up here that was close to the ball and hip joint is the sirloin roast I'm clean that up a little bit and I think that's what I'm going to want to use in our kampama. I'm going to separate this little section here on a deer. I call this a broil. You see how that grain runs through like that? You cook it up and then slice it across the grain and it makes it a whole lot more tender when you serve it. And fall right on right on that muscle line. Actually that is so pretty, I'm going to use some of that in our cup of ma and uh, mix a little bit of that with that sirloin. And I'm just going to trim up this top round because Sunday I want to smoke up some of this top round in the smoker there and kind of cook it like I would a Boston butt, make like a barbecue out of it and serve up bear tacos for supper and that right there is a piece we're gonna smoke up for the bear barbecue tacos all right that leads us our bottom around here i'm gonna just trim that up a little bit and i ain't sure how i'm gonna cook that one up yet but, but we'll think of something eclectic <laughs> that'll work for now okay for our 
compama or stew. I want to cut this in chunks about like so. Hi right, doll, you want some bear meat for supper, baby? I got this little piece here that was trimmed from that sirloin. I'm gonna leave that just like that. And we should be good to go. Okay, here's what we got going in our kapama. Of course, we got our bear sirloin and some of that broil cut that I've cut up in these chunks right here. We're just going to salt with some Himalayan pink sea salt and pepper. We've got some tomatoes. I'm going to probably use about two 14 ounce cans. Diced up white onion. I got some diced up green onion just because I had to use some up that I had left over. It doesn't really call for it in this recipe, but I'm going to put a couple of stalks of celery. Um, right here, I've got a cinnamon stick, eight allspice berries. I don't have fresh parsley so we're going with freeze-dried and normally the recipe wouldn't call for mushrooms but I like mushrooms so we're going in with that we're going to brown this bear meat up in some extra virgin olive oil and then we get all that in the pot we're going to add some brandy oh one other thing now Diane Cochillas she likes to use dried figs in her compromise but I don't have any dried figs but what I do have are these dried apricots all right, we're going to go on with some of this pink Himalayan sea salt. This nice grinder here. Okay. Now some fresh cracked pepper. I'm going to course it up a little bit. And we're going to serve that stew up with some basmati rice steamed in chicken broth and saffron threads. A saffron rice. All right, we got us a nice fire going. going right over that fire with our Dutch oven. About a quarter cup or so of olive oil. A little bit more. Okay, we got us a nice shimmer going on our olive oil. I'm just going to add up our bear here. Nice trimmed up bear meat. Get a nice browning on it. Mmm. Man, it's already smelling good. Get that meat all nice and browned up. All right, let's give them a little flip. That's browning up nice. Okay, and goes our onions. Get them sauteed up in there. And our celery. Cook that onion and celery till it gets kind of translucent. Okay, and goes our tomatoes. And our parsley, allspice berries, and cinnamon. And now our dried apricots. I kind of cut those in half. Looking good. Alright. Go right on it with the lid. I kind of spread those coals out a little bit so the heat wasn't so intense. And we're just going to let our stew sit there and simmer in that, that pot with the lid on it about 30 minutes and then we'll check it. Okay, we're about 40 minutes in. We've got a nice gentle flame going and a nice slow cook. Right here, I'm going to add in our mushrooms. That'll give us a little bit more moisture and our quarter cup or so of brandy. Just get that all blended in. Nice. Mmm. The aroma coming out of this pot. Uh, we're looking good there now. I might have to taste test. Get a little bit of that broth. Huh. I don't think it's gonna suck y'all. All right, there's one more thing we got to add right here is these Greek olives. Just stir them all in there nice. Back on it with our lid. Okay, I got this chicken broth boiling up. I'm going to boil up a chicken for Tally Girl's supper to feed her all week last week. 
I'm gonna take a nice pinch, nice pinch of these saffron threads. See that? Saffron threads. I'm gonna throw that in there. Then in goes our basmati rice. I got a cup of basmati rice and just a shade over two cups of that chicken broth. And I did put a little bit of that pink Himalayan sea salt in it because when I cooked the chicken broth, boiled the chicken, I didn't put any salt in it for Tally Girl. Get a little stir around in there. Put a lid on it and turn the heat down. And we're just gonna simmer that rice there in that little pot for about 13 minutes on that low heat. Okay, it's been 13 minutes. We're going to add these fresh frozen garden green peas. I've had semi thawing out right in the pot. Put the lid on it. Set this little pot right here on the corner of the wood stove and give that rice about another 13 minutes. Oh, I think we're getting close. Okay, we're just going to take our pot of stew right on in here. Set it right down here on top of the wood stove for a cooking hole pattern till the boys get their showers and can get on down here and eat it up. Okay, we're just going to toss some peas in there and fluff our rice a little bit. Mm. Mm. Justin. Yes, sir. You're in my seat, I hope you know. Yeah, not, I want to get more, my good more, impo <laughs> more importantly, not so much my seat as Tally Dog's seat. Tally <laughs> Where's Tally Dog? Come here, baby. <laughs> there she is. Well, Tally girl. We can work it out. Before daylight, what time were y'all on your stands? I was on my stand at quarter after six. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't daylight yet. I How many it. deer did y'all see today? I got in my stand about 10 p.m. last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many deer did y'all see today? I zero saw today. zero. How many bears did two. you see today? Zero. zero. Yeah, you saw two at five o'clock. I saw two at, at the five. end of the field. Well, we did see from zero. your cabin window. We saw seven deer. Oh Seven yeah. Eyes. When the Seven guide eyes. was with you this morning, taking uh, you up <laughs> on sure. the mule. When it wasn't legal to <laughs> at shoot at every yet. turn, did we he, had a deer. So he didn't get lost going up this morning. Yeah, no, we're not going no. Down, he did not get lost. But I put him on eight deer. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but it was the only trouble was you can't spotlight. He started to leave and he, he kind of filed back. And he wanted to pray with us. <laughs> I don't know if the prayer is for us, for him going back down. Well, the you know, we always pray before we go fishing. That's right. And we always pray before we go hunting. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Here's the deal, y'all. I cooked up this bear meat. This is what you call an eclectic meal. Do you know what it is? Besides bear meat? Tally dog. <laughs> it is, I know. It's bear kampama. It's a Greek stew, traditionally made with lamb, beef, or chicken. But tonight, thanks to David, we got it with bear. Looks Cousin great. Dave, you are not in Boardman, Ohio, my friend. No, sir, we are not. I know that because of the size of the deer. In Boardman, <laughs> they're way bigger. <laughs> in the backyard, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, look. Italian guy likes rice. Sure. Spanish rice. Oh, you're waiting for me. Sorry, Brucey. Well, take your time. That's it. Shoot. Yep. Let's see that on the video. Oh, that's serving suggestion right there. That saffron rice with real saffron threads. We open that Josh up, Bruce. We want some of that. Where do you want to sit, Bill? You sit here. Right, go, you go sit? ahead and sit there. You sure? Where you were, yeah. I'm gonna get a glass of wine real quick. Okay. Yeah, look at me. Come here. Look at me. What did you just ask me? Do you have a wine glass? Look, Justin, look here. Look here. Look here. Follow the camera. This right here? <laughs> hey, where do you think you are, son? I can drink wine out of anything. I can drink it out yeah, of the bottle. Yeah, but look, what do you got? What do you got right there in your hand? A little wine glass. Yeah, you do. And you doubted me. 
No, I didn't doubt oh, you. Okay. Justin, I want you to do me a favor. What's that? Right there in the middle of the table is a candle. It says Cozy Camp's got a lid on it. Take the lid off. And right there is a fire stick. And I want you to light that candle. Because my dear sweet friend, Laura, sent me that candle. And this meal we're having tonight calls for celebration and Laura's candle. Dave the Hoot, would you like to say blessing for us? I sure would. God, get up there. We're going to say blessing. All right, Just, All right Dave. You know, you know the role here. Ready? You're part of this routine. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for Bruce and his family and the Dixons and this special time together. This camp, this opportunity to make some more memories. Thank you for Bill, his servant's heart, to bless us with this meal tonight. And for Justin and our special time here together. And for our families back home, we just ask a blessing on them. God, we just pray that you continue to bless our president. Give this country wisdom. Help us to continue to seek after you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I want you all to try it before I get mine because I might just want peanut butter and Ritz crackers. <laughs> I want an honest, honest opinion. Well, having never eaten bear, seems good to me. Excellent. Very good. What does it taste like? It tastes like bear. No, <laughs> no, 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 it does not. It tastes like beef. Very oh my good. gosh. There's a lot of different flavors going on in there with the apricots and the Dude. olives and the yeah. cinnamon and the allspice. All right, I guess I'll Dude. make a plate then. Very good. Very good. Who's now 30? Is what? <laughs> a piece of like oil. Anything else. If you cook it right, cure it right, mm -hmm. it should be good. But if you just Oops. slap it in a frying pan. Well, another good thing too, when he killed it, when he shot it. He dropped it right there. Yeah, and it hadn't been run by dogs. It, it was didn't no even know it had it coming. No so. adrenaline built up that's in the meat to turn big, it into lactic big, acid. That's a big deal. And then I dry aged it in an open pan uh, on ice in the cooler for six days. That's a different sauce. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not Italian. It's Greek. Yep. I mean, it's got the uh, the olives and the allspice. I got the inspiration for this dish from a client of mine this summer that does it with lamb. And that's the way I was going to do it, it was with lamb on a campfire cook. But I couldn't find any decent lamb. Hmm. So David killed the bear and I'm like, light bulb went off, hey, let's do it with bear meat. And my favorite Greek chef, she's on PBS, is Diane Kochilis. And I looked at her recipe for Arne Kampamas, and that's a Greek stew that could be with lamb, chicken, beef, you name it. Huh, why not bear? Turned out really well. What time did you start cooking it? I came down and you got trimmed the roast out. You got I got my deer stand at noon. Came in, took a shower, oh, it's one o'clock, I trimmed the roast yeah. out, Dollar store sold it. and then uh, got the fire going. Yeah, I got I mean, everything on about 4.30. Nothing good, but, good, but well, well, the meat but they going. The meat, so that's, you know, and it's, it's been cooking two for, and a half, three hours. yeah, two and a half hours. Try to tender it up a bit. You did it in, the, in that pot, you just, but, you just basically, like a crock pot. You just slowly. Exactly, it. yeah, it's like a redneck crock pot. Cast iron Dutch I oven on a cast iron from last weekend. I just, so what? Hot. You're having seconds. Yeah, I'm a so it really don't suck. No, it doesn't yeah. suck at all. And I'm a grown boy. Had bear. Uh, it's actually the very first time I've ever had a bear. Here, so yeah, yeah. And it's the first time I've seen a bear. So <laughs> it's kind of. Well, actually, seeing the bear in the pot is not exactly the same as seeing a bear. What? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. I love that saffron. I, I gotta have a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. Just a little more. He's been there before. Great job. Thank you, Cousin Dave. Great job. 
I might not have to be referring to you as a Yankee City boy anymore. Well, I think you had the best. I'm going to the gum tree tomorrow, I think. Yep. Okay. Well, and Dave, you're going where? To the White Pine? White Pine. Brucey, where are you going? I'm going to Man. hunt this power line over here across the road. Okay. Where are you going? I might go right back to uh, the Bear Hollow stand. Okay. How does it go in Psalm 8? O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. To have the privilege to be able to live in a land where I can hunt and gather for myself, to be able to learn and gain knowledge and perspective for the dynamic of survival to me is a blessing indeed. In these very uncertain times that we find ourselves living in today, the self-confidence in knowing that I have a pretty good chance of being able to survive and provide for my own family because of certain talents and skills on loan to me by God gives a reassurance that I am truly thankful for. It.